Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another enticing and exciting, enthralling, and possibly entrail splitting episode of the Black Tower <laughs> podcast. I am your Baja Mael, Andrew. I am your Tsorovan Mahail, Josh. And I am your Aman Khan Mahail, Daniel. We I like here. how the Aman Khan Mahail is Scottish. We are here on this Wunderbar oh, no, Wednesday. Oh, no, no. The Amon Khan Mikhail is actually Yiddish. Oh, Yiddish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fucking terrible. It was, it was definitely more Scottish the first time I did it. <laughs> but we're back on this Wednesday, this wonderful <laughs> Wednesday of some absolutely amazing and just uh, beyond Holy exciting crap. casting announcements. Yes! We finally have our uh, Never Was a Lamp men for the series. Damn, Skippy! Uh, Damn. I would say fight me, but you're gonna lose, so yeah. just don't even, don't even try. <laughs> wow, um, we got, got men. Sean. Some Sean Chan arrogance right there, that's, right? <laughs> no, that's Malkiri confidence, sir. <laughs> Malkiri confidence <laughs> coming to a brewery near you. Ooh. Malkiri confidence. I Maybe like that's it. what I should name the mead that I'm making for the uh, Mad- Gathering Madness. Is it golden color? Yes, it is. We'll put a crane on the bottle and Malkiri confidence. Here we go, dude. Done. That's it. Hashtag Malkiri confidence. Yeah, so we got... All right, I think we just found a new sticker, guys. Hey. So we got our men. We got our Sue on. Um, We got some more. Who else did we get, Josh? Do you remember? We got... Oh. I'm just... We got... Daniel. So so the one that I'm really excited about um, is actually Peter Franson. So we've known that he is going to be in the show for quite some time. Oh, yeah. Technically, we do actually have two Sue ons. Yeah, because we have young and adults. We got adults. The adults uh, uh, Suan just got announced. The reason why I'm confirmed about him and his Aes Sedai, which I cannot remember her friggin' name now. The reason I'm excited about that is because it does confirm that we're getting some new spring content. Like that's, it's no longer, because when when we got child Suan, everybody was like, ooh, are we getting, you know, are we getting uh some uh new spring content or are we just getting you know are we just getting some fun like what are we is it going to be a flashback maybe when she's talking about you know fish guts ah yes we got Uh, claire perkins as claire perkins Mm kareen and peter Uh, franzen uh, as her water stefan yes and then uh we had kate fleetwood it was Leandrin. Leandrin. Leandrin, which I I want to say that they said that before that we they got did. confirmation. Before, they actually did, yeah. But they made the announcement official now. Yes, because she was actually like at the tail end of an announcement, like yes. two months ago or something. And if you guys look at her picture that they posted, it's on Twitter. so perfect. Oh, oh yeah, that is. It is like a, scary perfect. A beautiful woman. It, that is a beautiful woman who will step all on you. Yeah, there will be nothing left of you. And yeah. it's terrifying. And it's not spoilers. We're just saying Leandrin is a very, very powerful person. Whew. Kudos to the character. Yes. Mm. And then, Indeed. last but not least, we also did have these people announced, but they, Wheel of Time on Prime on Twitter felt the need to announce them again. I guess it's an official announcement. Uh, but Priyanka Bose is Alana Mosvani, and she's got her two warders, Ivan, played by Emmanuel Imani, and Maxim, played by Taylor Napier, C.T. Napier. Yeah, to be completely honest, I feel like that was that was mostly just, uh, we've got a lot of Aes Sedai in here, so let's just re-announce all of them. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I think you're what's, right. What's the harm? No, exactly. There's, there's no reason not to. Uh, even though there is also doesn't really seem to be so much of a reason to, but like, again, why not? Who, who the fuck is, you know, but that's how we do. So dope announcements for casting on another fantastic, uh, what are, what do they call these? Like, uh, what Wednesday? The, I mean, I know Wheel it's what Wednesday, Wednesdays. but what, what are they? The reading club? Wheel of time reading club. Yeah. 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 Wheel oh of time yeah, yeah, yeah. Reading club. Yeah. Yes. So, which I've heard is fantastic stuff. I have never been available to actually participate in it and one, too lazy to go back and look at it. So. One thing I will <laughs> say too, um, that was just mentioned in our, our live chat. So again, if you're, if you're a Patreon supporter, you have access to the 
live chats that we do with the recording. So, hey, there's a quick shameless plug. But one of the things that was just mentioned in there was it was a reminder that I posted a video that was dug up pretty quickly on Instagram of the actress who was playing Min doing a like a yeah, boxing Kate, Kate workout. Alexander, I think. And yes, oh Kate Alexander. Oh my, dude, she could just move. Kate. Just K A E. Yes, K A E. Alexander. Which is why it's so and perfect she, that she's Min because Min is only three letters too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I like where you're going with that. But no, Spoiler but warning. No, El don't you dare. Don't you way more <laughs> letters. <laughs> no, but um, she can move. Knife in your chest. Like, she has got some really good Try it from combat capability. Oh, it wouldn't be me. <laughs> It'd be men. And I feel like men, men's yeah, she's character, I feel like we're going to get some good physicality from her on the TV show, which I'm really oh, I excited agree. about. Yeah. But yes, anyway, let's get that spoiler condom on. So I will now be explaining proper use of the spoiler condom. So you take your banana. You pinch <laughs> the tip and you roll the rest across the entire breadth of the area that needs to be protected. In this case, we pinch the tip of book one and we roll that again. I tried to do it with a straight face. We roll it down to book number Cinco. To Fires of... Wait, is it Fires of Heaven? Yes. It is Fires of Heaven. Yes. Until Fires of Heaven. So we're going through... Now we Some kinda, day you two are going to learn book order. We covered... I know Eye book world order, and at the least great what hunch. number five Horse is. shit. I know what <laughs> number five is, and I know what number one is, and what number 14 is. Leave me alone. The last and time... And none of them in the book. <laughs> We're, we're wanting to make sure we I love you, one and two <laughs> love you in the spoiler warning because protection is only good if it's completely used. used. <laughs> and the conversation could go back to book one and two. We yes. do recognize that it is highly unlikely that someone has only read book three, four, and five. And they're going to be like, whoa, whoa, what you're talking about book one? I haven't read that. I don't even know where these kids are from. <laughs> We just want to cover our bases. They keep on talking about this place, Emmons Field. Where the fuck is that? And so we're talking about the Lord Dragon. Talking that blah, blah, blah. He is the Dragon Reborn. He's the reason why the Black Tower exists. Wow, just just step right over your, your allotted role here. Who was supposed to be introducing our topic? Andrew's Josh? introducing it. Yeah. yeah Andrew's he is. doing it right now. Look at him. <laughs> Gosh. So uh, those uh, you guys can't see, see this, but we, we're, we're using uh, <laughs> Zoom right now. So it's, it's a new experience for us. They're both talking about this, and I'm just sitting there like the kid at the end of the dinner table. I'm like, so when do we get the pie? Like, what's going on? <laughs> what's happening? It's pretty what's fantastic. Even, what's even happening right now? But yeah, so we told you guys two weeks ago uh, that we would be taking and splitting up RAN. We're not going to do consecutive episodes on RAN. Well, not back to back, which is what consecutive yes. kind of means. Uh, so last week, a bit. we did talk about uh, Angry All. And there's some stuff from that that needs to be addressed. I think before we go ahead and dive into this episode, it shouldn't take long. Uh, so I'm going to turn that over to Josh and Daniel, who are far more familiar with it than I have been able to be. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, as you guys know, last week we discussed Angreal, right? We, we meant to give a good sort of smearing of all things, of all objects of the power. And we kind of got lost down a paralysis net hole, which we was did. still a lot of fun, though. Um, but one of the points, one of the questions we... Also, or, or, actually, guys, before we do this, if we're going to do this now, which I'm totally down with, uh, for right this second... Your spoiler condom actually goes all the way up until at oh. least book eleven. <laughs> oh, yeah. If well, not, I wasn't probably go until any. the end of the series. I wasn't so, gonna go. If you have not, if you any just want to go that. and listen to the Rand portion of this because you have not yet finished more than book five, awesome. That's no problem. I would skip to about uh, five minutes from now because we're gonna be talking up. At least five minutes. 
of correction. Well, you see, the good thing about spoiler condoms is uh, sometimes they wind up re-rolling on their own through the course of being it's true. used. So it's true. Truth. So I got to keep an so, eye on them. Don't reuse it, but it will reduce points- itself. <laughs> Yes. One of the and hey, points again, if you up, have enough spoiler condoms, which you should always have enough spoiler condoms, you know, just roll it all the way down to, to book 14, take it off, put a new one on to, to book five. Never, never this use metaphor, two at once. This metaphor is going way out of control. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fantastic. I love it. So we brought up a point that there wasn't really any kind of a distinction between Angreal and Sangreal, other than Sangreal are bigger. And not in size, but in how much of the one power, power that they can channel. But it never says for sure, at least not that we could determine, at what point in time does an object of the power that allows you to take in more of the power, when does it stop being an Angreal and start being a Sangreal? Daniel, do you want to tell the people what we were given? Uh, I, sure. So funny enough, I disagree with this point. So, <laughs> which is why I wanted you to do it. Writhe, writhe in agony. What hole? Uh, shit. Where was it? It was in our Discord. It yeah, I think was not it was in, in the, the common comments. room. It was not. It doesn't look like it was. Maybe it's in discussion. Probably in the uh, spoiler common room. Oh, it might be in spoilers. Probably. Spoilers private yeah. dining room. Spoiler yeah, there we private go. dining. Maybe. Bam. Nope. Nope. Dude, Jesus. Why did we not prepare for this, guys? <laughs> we're totally we prepared. prepare for shit. At least well, the edit will show that we're prepared because I'll cut all this out of the edit. That's so only live right. listeners will know See? the frauds Patreons, that we are. <laughs> only you guys will know. One more advantage of having the Patreon. An A. I don't know. I do remember seeing it. I just don't remember where I saw they it. Make, they right. make the point. The important thing is what was said. Uh, and, and the important thing that was said was that the difference between an Angriol and a Sangriol, because we do see excuse me, a number of Angriol that are across a spectrum. Uh, and so it's certainly not a requirement that Angriol be of the same power level. Uh, the difference between what makes an Angriol an Angriol and a Sangriol a Sangriol is a... It buffer. is in the common room, by the way. I just found it. Is so, it? Is it yep. just that far back? Jesus yep. Christ. Um, so do you want to read that out? Because so I think I just did a very good job of like yeah. really whittling it down, but I definitely did not get some of the finer points. So the biggest the biggest key difference that appears to exist between an Angreal and a Sa Angreal is that a Sa Angreal has no buffer, has no limit, has no safety net. Sorry, you're right. Yes, that it has no buffer. That an Angreal an, has an upper limit. Angreal, and that a Sa Angreal does not. Angreal uh, yeah. says you can do, you can channel three times your normal power and that's it. Period. End of story. Yep. And uh, or, and once or you hit there that might ceiling. be another Angreal that's like you can channel five times your normal, you know, ability, and that's it. Okay, cool. Saw Angreal are like you can channel an exponential, an exponentially greater amount of the one power than you could unaided. However, you can burn yourself out if you're not careful with a Sangreal. Yeah. Which and this that, gets that was into, where I I was in disagreement. Yeah, it gets into some some of the deeper mechanics and deeper physics of channeling and you know, how much of the one power can you hold, which suggests that the one power is quantifiable by a unit of measure. And it gets real difficult because this is something that Robert Jordan was very purposefully vague about. He didn't want people to go, ah, I can channel 10 sidenes. Ah, well, I can channel 12 sidenes. 
he wanted it to be fluid fluid he wanted it yeah, to something... be more harder to pin down yeah well and it's it's a lot like qualitative the not quantitative <laughs> jedi in the prequels versus jedi in the original trilogy whereas in the original trilogy the jedi ways had been relegated to an ancient hokey religion that was a, a, a mystery to basically everybody and a legend to everybody else. Whereas in the prequel Jedi, they're like, oh yeah, we got midi chlorians, bitch. Oh, cool. No, now we no, can quantify the amount of force that. interaction. Shh. But Robert Jordan was very intelligent and did not try to solve his channeling problem by using midi chlorians. Yes. Thanks, Steve. I mean, he sort of did. But he also didn't, because again, in the in the you know RPG, there's power levels. Uh, in the companion, there are power levels for Aes Sedai. In uh, you know, there there are notes that he has that are actually quantifying it and whatnot. But I I agree that I don't feel I feel like he didn't post them on purpose. That it's not a situation where. Uh, he wanted it to be quantifiable. It's just that in some cases he needed to give numbers because people needed to know right, them. Right, right. I mean, there's there's a certain amount of storytelling that you you absolutely have to get into the nuts and bolts. Like, there's just there's yeah. no way around that. Yeah. And I mean, like, again, when you're talking about a situation where you're sitting there being like, all right, well, I need to know exactly where Nynaeve is versus Mogedian versus Elaine Mogedian. versus, you know, whatever. Eat my butt. Mogedian. Can I not? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about like, I thought it was like an open-ended like contract when I was like, can, no. can I not? <laughs> yeah, it was specifically at Josh for questioning my pronunciations. If the TV show tells me it's Mogedian, <laughs> I can see turning and changing, but Mugadian. until then, it is Mogadishu. Mugadishu? I am with Michael Kramer, motherfucker. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Uh, Fun yeah, but- story, if you go hashtag Muggy Dean, you will find a very funny tweet from Kate Redding. So Correct. There's that. Uh, but it's it's definitely I I disagree with this particular distinction as far as Sangrial and Angrial because we don't really see it very often. But there are some very powerful Angrial that I think absolutely used in the wrong hands or not in the wrong sorry wrong hands is absolutely not the right phrase. Uh, right. But hands that are not capable of using it. Yes. I absolutely see no reason why that person wouldn't be burned out by the power. Well, and there's nothing that says if you are using an Angreal or Sangreal, you can't be burned out. You can still exactly. draw too much in. I think exactly. I think the difference is, is that when you draw an Angreal, so again, the numbers problem, I can channel 10 Sidene. I've got an Angreal that will add five Sidene to my ability to channel. So now, mathematically speaking, my ability to channel is 5 plus 10. Taking the Angre all into account first, Mm -hmm. that will not impact my ability to channel. So I take the 5, then I take the 10. If I try and go past that 10, I am now channeling, quote, air quotes, 15 Sidene, but I'm using an Angre all. So if I try and do 16 Sidene's, with the Angreal, I'm burning myself out. Basically, I mean, the yeah. way the way I read it is every time they talk about like pulling power through an Angreal, they they literally say that they're pulling power into themselves through the Angreal. So yes. I kind of see the Angreal like a solar power uh, battery, where ten or let's say five Sidene worth of Sidene is in the Angreal at all times, and then it filters through that into you. I think it's whenever mm. you go beyond that. And you're trying to pull that extra, that excess idea side there into you that your person as a battery can't hold. That that's where the issue comes in, and the Angreal are more likely to have either lower limits on it so that you can't pull as much and potentially destroy yourself, whereas the Sangreal potentially, they, it's it's like a governor in a car. 
you know, you can adjust the governor, but it only lets you go to a certain amount. And that's kind of how the Angry All are. Uh, whereas the Sangre All don't have a governor. It's kind of the way I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of it. No, and, and as I said, I, I see what that, that is as far as the buffer and the ceiling. Um, and and it's, it's definitely a thing that they seem to talk about, but it's also a situation where, like, <sighs> there are a number of examples of Sa Angrial that, why would you? Like, right. again, if you know your upper power limit, just i i guess I, the difference here is is that it won't let you versus you don't but i i don't know it, i i definitely think thing. that it has so much more to do with the power level especially because again the difference between it's calendar and the Shodan call is so ridiculously different yeah. that the yeah. fact that like even trying to compare those two is like in my opinion in some ways trying yeah. to compare the little fat man with the sword to the to calendar yeah fair but i think so the did we touch on everything that we needed to correct so. and talk yeah, about i think we did because i think we yeah. went over the five minutes so the people that were like you said five minutes and now it's ruined it is ruined well, so the black tower bitches if if you're we get still using where we go yeah if you're still using your spoiler condom and it doesn't need to be replaced and it's only rolled back up to book five <laughs> you're good you're if good if now. it's been used then we do recommend removal of the now uh disgusting do not reuse don't put it back on because there's so many <laughs> things <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and put on uh a new one i would but it's like a copy of the old one it's not the old one because you don't reuse but so we're back for the condom books one through five eye of the world through fires of heaven and as many Indeed. minutes ago uh josh alluded to the the topic we are resuming our discussion on is of course uh rand althor uh, randomus althoramus i almost actually said randomus althor yeah um I'm also known head. as uh biggest dickus um no. Oh, okay. Biggest. I, yeah. Dickus. Yeah, yeah. But Why so, is yeah. everyone laughing? Why is biggest dick is so I funny? Think it, I think it's one of those joke names like Naughtiest Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> like Didn't Maximus. Take it. De Theseus, Cerilius, well, see, then like, then like Marinus. biologists, whatever, use those joke names like legitimately. So now you have Gluteus Maximus. Yes. I think that started as a joke name, and it just—that's got to be. That's got to be. But anyway, well, and so, especially anyway. the fact that there's a gluteus maximus and a gluteus minimus. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. They but knew what no they were doing. Majoramus. Yeah. So in the last episode on Rand, we got all the way through Jesus the Christ. end of the Great Hunt, uh, where Rand has uh, accepted him being the Dragon Reborn, uh, believing in the moment because he's passed out for the last bit of the book that he has defeated uh, the Dark One, which we all know, and even people that haven't read beyond it know is bullshit. No, you haven't. That's uh, twice I defeated that the Dark how One. How many times? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Come on, Guys, man. everything's fine now. Nothing bad's going to happen because I killed the devil. <laughs> yeah. Which, he was wrong. Um, which yeah, is yeah. thankful because it gives us more books. Um, I mean, would have, that would have really sucked point. if it was actually done, and like the rest of the series was just like the adventures of rebuilding the world. <laughs> You're not wrong. Like <laughs> you like world building? How about nothing but world building <laughs> for twelve books? But anyway, I heard so, you liked world wheel, building. Uh, welcome so I to put the world wheel building of crap. in your world world building, uh -huh. so that you could world build while you world built. Welcome to the Wheel of Time Minecraft server. <sighs> So now we move into the Dragon Reborn book. The Durgan. Mm, yes. So we're the what is what is all what is all Randy Boy doing? When we start book three. Well let's see. They go to Falma at the end of book two. And where does he at go? At the beginning of that? book three, he is in a camp. They're in a camp. Moraine That's right. And Min and Lon and Perrin. Perrin. 
Yeah, and the Shinarans. Matrim. The Shinarans are with him. Correct. And yeah, they they are kind of like, okay, what do we do now? And he's kind of like, oh. And the Shinarans are like, uh, yeah, so we're following the Lord Dragon. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're the Dragon Sworn. And That's... then Moraine is like, shit, we need to figure out how to get this boy to Tarvalin so we can protect him. But and she, I think I think Rand has started paying more attention to the Corinthian cycle or the prophecies of the dragon of the yes. dragon, and he's like looking okay like if I am the dragon, there's stuff I need to do. Yes. So what do I need to do? Well, uh, so I I don't I would disagree with that. I mean, I, I don't think that comes until I don't think that comes until book the end of book three. Well, I'm saying, like, he, as he far gets as all of mass, this stuff from the library at Tier. Yeah, so he's going to go based though, off of popular stories. Yes. And the yes. biggest popular story right now is that you you will unequivocally know that the Dragon Reborn has returned and is here in the last battle is nigh when the Stone of Tear falls and he takes Kalendor. Yes. I, sort of. So but he breaks it, again, from that's the group. So much, but, 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 he, oh, he has a dream. Easy there, gang. He banger. has a dream. Perrin has a dream and Matt has a dream. And that is really what's driving I him at this point. had a dream in days gone by um, of grabbing a crystal sword out of the air. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Because they My do start having the dreams. My two friends where he's both like, had it too. Uh, so I will separate from the group. Right. All right. Uh, yeah, so... That's what because okay, he has a dream where he sees that... Balzamon like in the Stone of Tear, staring at it, basically saying, "I'm going to get it, and then I will destroy you. I'm not actually dead." So, okay, fair yep. point, fair point. Exactly. So Rand is more like, "I thought I had finished this guy. I haven't, but I'm the only one that can. I have to stop him, or everybody I know and love is going to yes. die." Yes. Yes, and please yeah. don't get me wrong. I absolutely think that the Corinthian cycle and whatnot does have something to do with it. I'm not taking away from that, but mm -hmm. it definitely does seem to be more of the dream than it does like, oh, well, I'm going to go back to the Corinthian cycle, read it, and then do okay. that. There, yeah, no. When he starts studying the Corinthian, he is definitely already in civilization cycle the prophecies prophecies of the dragon that's easier to say it's here yeah um he's definitely right now, there. they're in this like really just like mountainy they're in the mountains of mist yeah they're in the mountains of mist they're in this camp that is thrown together that they're just kind of using as a base of operations to just right. be somewhere while Moraine puts her thoughts together and tries to convince Rand of what he needs to do next. And and that's uh, the thing but, is Rand kind of has this, because he's kind of panicking because he's like, well, mm -hmm. at the very least, I'm a man who can channel. And that's not good. Yeah. Now, at the yeah. most, you know, I may have accidentally declared myself as the Dragon Reborn, so <laughs> I have two choices. Be the dragon or die. So Here's I might as well die doing something to prove I'm the dragon because if I'm doing a thing that proves I'm the dragon, I can't die. So therefore I'm yep. safe attacking the stone of tear to get Kalendor, whatever the heck that is. But he does have a series of dreams that kind of pull him to Kalendor. You know the coolest thing about this book when talking about Ran? We only have to talk about 2.4% of the Dragon Seriously. Reborn book true. about the Dragon Reborn. Because this true. is one of those books yep. where you barely see him. You see him for 20% of chapter 9 and that is the most you see him because I believe is chapter 9 the chapter where he leaves the, the group by the end of it? I think so. And then the rest of the book is, is Moraine but, and Perrin and Egwene so and Nynaeve. Yeah, it's mainly Egwene, yeah, Perrin, and Everybody following him around. Yeah, chasing him around, following him by the effects of his severe nature. More marriages, more deaths, miraculous healings, mm -hmm. uh, mysterious deaths, yeah. like something out of Final Destiny. Um, until we get to like chapter 55, Final where he's just over. Thank you. Right. Um, you're right. Um, <laughs> until we get to chapter 55, where he takes ju literally just over half of the chapter for his own POV. Right. Uh, but that, of course, is the, the climax yeah. of the series. Uh, not of the series, of this book. 
of this book, of the book. Of the series. Sorry. Which is so, actually yeah. in some ways the climax of this series because as we all know, if you've read more than the th- first three books, it really is kind of broken up into books of three. It's mm-hmm. kind of broken up into trilogies. Now again, I mean, there is this big overarching story and whatnot, but it does really feel like this is an ending. It's broken into uh, threes, the then it's broken... Three. Uh, not quite in half. It's broken into like something closer, like thirty-eight, yeah. whatever the other percent is. Yeah, sixty-two. But anyway, so so we see Rand there in the camp. Moraine is trying to convince him of what to do next. There's an attack on the camp that convinces oh, him he needs right. to leave because because Trollocs come in and he thinks everybody's in danger because of his presence. And so be, based on this dream, based on the fact that Min tells him about a viewing that she has and it totally comes true and it sucks. Um, and Rand definitely feels like it's his fault and this is the beginning of his stupid women list. Um, <laughs> he then runs off and just- You're not talking about the, the woman that she behind. says that comes into their camp and is going to die, are you? Yeah, that's exactly that, No, she what tells that to Perrin. About. I thought. She also tells it to Rand. Oh. Yeah, oh, she so tells, she basically she tells him that no matter what, this woman is going to die. Okay, right. okay. Yeah, because yeah, that's yes, when they have the exactly. first conversation of, you can, you can do and something, again, we got to warn her. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it's one of those situations where Min has so much experience with this, and she's like, guys, I have tried it. It doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. All of this uh, annoying, like... Uh, smart and like factual stuff and rand is standing there just getting sort of the first taste of men's powers if you will and standing there being like no there has to be something you haven't tried and she's like bitch no (laughs) i've had years of this shut the fuck up and then of course he gets the right and then he actually gets the taste of it where it happens and he's like oh well fuck and then he feels responsible, all of that different stuff. And he goes off on his own in this very broody Batman manner and then just leaves. He the just starts to go to tear. And as you said, the, the most of the book is following the rest of them as they follow him as he makes his way from the Mountains of Mist yeah. to, uh, to the Stone of Tear. And as you said, we have all of these weird towns where different stuff happens. Uh, we also have an encounter that he has with a dark friend where he <laughs> just kind of knows she's a dark friend from the beginning and dick. Oh, where they all show up on the horses at the pond sword. Yep, like in a little exactly. mini oasis. And he doesn't kill them immediately because he's like, Yeah, he has this like maybe little they're conversation. Not bad. Yeah. And then they obviously show to be dark friends. And he's like, Kill them all. And anybody else that shows up, I'm going to kill them. Yeah, I think basically. the same thing happens like later on because doesn't he have like a dream or something and Perrin shows up? Is that now or later? So yes. Um, and if I remember correctly, that one's like a really weird one because Perrin and Egwene are actually like I don't know. It's it's always been weird to me just based on the fact that they end up in Teller and Riyadh that I always felt like maybe that was like their first touching. But again, it's also weird because they're like evil. They're yeah. not totally evil, but they're oh, also yeah. a little evil. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know what's happening. And Rand is not entirely <laughs> like there right now. Yeah, no. Because he's a like, mess. it seems like for him, it seems like every time he stops, if it's not Dark Friends, then there's fucking dark hounds running all the fuck around. Yeah, and like so he, he hides has in the no night time to so sleep. many times. Yeah, yeah, he has so no time to rest. He's, he's sleep deprived. Fucking... He doesn't know if all of his friends have been killed or hurt or whatever because he believes it's all his fault. He's got the and stress again, of I have to I get mean, here. Like, he's or also seeing them in dreams and their weird versions of the 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 friends he knew. Yeah, it's he's just a super mess. He's a fucking mess. He is a fucking <laughs> mess. And he leaves. It's like the weirdest, but most will of timey trail of breadcrumbs you could imagine. Like, how oh, can we yeah. follow this guy? Oh, de- you know, descriptions of a of a guy that everybody keeps saying looks reminiscent of the IL that we saw back at the Stone of Tear. <laughs> or not back at the Stone of Tear, but that we've met but on the way to the Stone. Yeah. Yeah. That we've met as readers once or twice already, at yes. least. In descriptions from other people like oh this should be a story of an iron man running around but he's got a sword and that's kind of weird and he doesn't have a veil 
But yeah, no, well, it's, and my other favorite go thing to a is fucking like, town and they're like, yeah, we had 30 weddings yesterday. A baby fell out of a 25 story <laughs> building straight on its head and survived and was laughing. But then and we yet, also uh, had a woman that looked a... the wrong way at a candle and burst in the flames. <laughs> yes. Not exact examples, but it's pretty yeah, much the long but... and short of it. Like, what the fuck? Yes, uh, somebody dropped every single pot they own on the ground, and none of them had even a scratch on them. And you yeah, get somebody's entire circle. wagon of, you know, Quendiar seals looked yeah. at them wrong, and every single one of them broke. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the, the, the weirdest things of coincidence that Just, yeah. even you as the reader, had you never known what a Taviran was, you'd be like, huh. That means huh. something. So Rand's They're probably back. following him. And more, every time a rain yeah. is like, yes, that is indicative that a Taviran has gone through here. And I know where the other two are. It must yep. be Rand. <laughs> <laughs> I have now, the I think, other two with me. I, could, I just want like Perrin to look at her once and be like, you can tell, huh? Really? Pray tell. <laughs> what was your first fucking clue, Madam I said I? Like, could you it must, be any more You must obvious? have tremendous wisdom <laughs> well Nothing i also love your that, powers like, of like, insight <laughs> well to be fair i do think that this is a situation where Perrin and matt catch on pretty quickly but she does have to explain it the first time because oh, yeah. she's like she's walking along and Perrin and matt are both looking at her being like bitch how do you know where you're going and Lon is well, standing there being like call my eyes to die a bitch one more time <laughs> and maureen's like lon Cool it. I've got this. Uh, And then she just explains what she's following and they're like, oh. And then they get to like their third town where this is true and Maureen's like, hey, Rand's and Perrin and Matt are like, yeah, 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 we got it. Yeah, we got it. We're We're on on board. We're here. I think (laughs) Matt's not with them still because Matt goes off to Tarvalon to be healed. No, you're right. You're right. So it's it's it's, Perrin and Egwene. Perrin, Egwene, and Maureen because they also sent men with Matt to to Tarvalon. Right. But I like... we can pretty much breeze through, like, we don't yeah. have to talk about pretty much the rest of it, yeah. but we can get all the way until uh, pretty much everybody shows up at the Stone of Tear. They're like, huh, look at that. There's a weird shadow figure climbing up the side of the Stone of Tear. <laughs> huh. What's all these other weird shadow figures that seem unrelated that are amassing and are about to go into the Stone of Tear? <laughs> yep. And then I Matt's think- somewhere in the background just running forward with shit that explodes. Yep. With he's Julin. like, he's like I'll, I'll put these <laughs> with, in uh, the with window your boy Julin. and yeah. it'll make a distraction. <laughs> uh, distraction. So to be Rand, fair, he wasn't wrong. You mean wrong. explosion? <laughs> that is a good distraction. Rand, uh, he just kind of like walks through the front gate. Yeah. No, he, he absolutely just like, does. Actually, well, sorry, bitches, I shouldn't say dragon. that. We don't know how Rand gets in there. We don't find it out. In the book, it is never described well, how Rand gets inside. I use the term walks in the front gate metaphorically because he's just like, what up, bitch? I'm here. I'm the dragon. And that big crystal thing, that's mine. Yeah, for in my, I feel like the actual like really... Uh, the the way that he actually got in because again it's never described i think he like half awake skims into mm. the stone of tear that that's definitely be. how i so, think it, because again he just shows up inside he climbs it i i he think does not that, no that's this gone. is what i hold on theory oh they see someone that looks matt sees somebody but never confirms exactly who it is so there sure. is the chance that it could have been Rand or it could have been an IL. I think that he saw Rand because I think an IL would be better than that at climbing and wouldn't have been seen. There's the counter argument of Matt's severe nature as well, allowing him to notice something like that. Yeah. Well, but, and I mean, like, there's also the the fact that um, it's hard to hide yourself on a building. Yeah. Here's here's my question, and I know this is about Rand, so I but. And it does feed back into Rand because the prophecy specifically says that the stone of tear will not fall until the until people, the of, people the dragon of the dragon come to the stone of tear. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I mean, I'm in my reread right now. I'm in like book 13 of my reread. I'm in Towers uh-huh. of Midnight, but I'm even having trouble thinking back. Why were they there? 
because they the were wise sent ones to were look like for the what the dragon yeah, the Karakar and so at least a few of them went to the stone of tear because they also have in their prophecies right so that so the there stone you of tear will fall so the the Aiel are there Rand is there Aiel are killing people left and right Rand finds his way to the innermost chamber where to he the, goes huh yep. it's a sword huh he runs into Lanfear as well. Yes. Who she tries to, you know, work convince him to feminine fears. wiles <laughs> upon him. Yeah. Um, he takes up Kalindor, Trollocs invade. There's a, a mighty battle, and Rand pulls on Kalindor and unlo- unleashes this sentient thundercloud. That's later. That's definitely later. Oh, is that later? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember how it's confirmed, but everything I can find does uh, seem to agree on the claim that the person Matt saw scaling the tower was, in fact, Rand. Okay, there you that's go. fair. I can't back it up because I can't find... I'd have to pull out the book itself and, and read uh, to find out, but... Well, there you go. Well, anyway, at the <laughs> but, end of this book, Rand has but Kalindor... Yeah, at, no, at the end of this book, he actually fallen. runs into our good friend who... Which Forsaken is in in the Stone of Tear? Ballsy, ballsy boy. Nope. It's totally not Balsamon. I'm actually asking because I don't remember his name. It's the one that uh, Moraine kills because she gets there just in time. Belal, thank Bilal. you. It's Belal, oh, yeah. and he is taunting That's Rand right. That's with right. Kalindor because he is. Well, or sorry, I shouldn't say that. He, I don't think he actually is well more powerful, but he thinks he is way more powerful yeah. than Rand right now, and he is giving him shit. Well, and he also <laughs> knows that Rand is the only one who can get Kalendor, so he's trying Correct. to get Rand yes. to, to draw Kalendor. That's right. So that can... shows up after Moraine yeah. shows, and is like beam of white plot device. <laughs> Yes. Well, and he does show up and Rand chases him around, but it's also a little weird because, like, you're not 100% sure whether he's a vision of Rand's or not. Because, again, Rand never does anything to him. He just no, he disappears. Kills him. He kills him with Kalindor. Does he? Mm-hmm. Because well, that's where... Time's a charm, right? Rand doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> but he's somehow using the power through Kalindor to push open... Uh, the yeah. all the little holes that Balzaman keeps running through, presumably going into oh, Teleron yeah. Riyadh in the living flesh. Yeah, he, no, you're he, right. So he uses Kalindor to right. push open the holes. Yeah. yeah. He takes his sword and shoves it in the closing tight holes and forces them wide open so that he can fit through. Stop open it, and open stop those it. holes up. Please, yeah. God, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what Balzaman was saying after he was chasing him with the fucking crystal sword. Like, oh my yeah. God, stop it, please. But I'm yeah, sorry. so Rand picks up Stop Kalendor because he finally open. is just like, okay, fine. If I'm gonna kill you, I need help because I just don't know what I'm doing well enough. He grabs Kalendor. Bilal almost takes it from him in some mm-hmm. ways, in a lot of ways. And that's when our girl Moraine shows up and Bail fires Bilal to death. Hell yeah. Uh, and then it does set up this whole chase scene of... Uh, I, I think a bunch of people are doing stuff in Teleran Riyadh because Perrin is also like running like a madman through different places. Yeah. All I can think of with all those columns in the heart of Tear, in the Stone of Tear, in the heart of the Stone of Tear, is like a Scooby Doo montage chase with the Benny Hill oh, theme. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and you see Rand chasing Balzaman one direction, and with Kalendor like kind of waving it above his head, and then you see them go back the other direction, and Balzaman's got yep. Kalendor, and, and then they go like back the other way, and Kalendor's chasing at both of them, <laughs> and then they go the other way, and they're both chasing Kalendor. <laughs> yeah, exactly, hundred percent. Uh, that and then Perrin's that's running canon. straight up the middle, like, what the fuck is going on? That's yep. canon. That's canon. Cause, yeah, because this is where Rand actually makes a statement that he's killed the Dark One, he's won, the Dark One is dead, and Rand's like, the Dark One is human. So, many so he doesn't name. leave behind a body. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, Egwene... Is it, yeah, because Egwene is there by now, I believe, right? Yeah, because yeah. she was one of the yes, ones that was captured, sure. yeah. yeah. And she's like, 
I recall a piece of parchment that Varence and I once showed me about some <laughs> prophecy, and I deduce this Deuce Dane is not Bruce Wayne, but is that Ishmael, <laughs> yep. chief among the Forsaken. Yep, I love it. And then the so are like, we are people of the dragon. We get Balsamon dead in the end of book three, but then he just comes back later. Or, but anyway, we well, know he's actually Ishmael. Balsamon is a here. big name. The well, balls Balls man was just his porn yes, star. It name. was a disguise. He yeah. was pretending to be the dark one, which is what pisses Shaitan off so right. fucking much about Ishamael's bullshit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we go into the Shadow Rising. They're still in tier. Uh, basically, Rand is king of tier, but they won't actually give him a title, partially because he won't take it. Right. Mm-hmm. Basically. Um, and so now is when we actually see him. He's like regularly in his room with his legs kicked up over the arm of a chair, reading every fucking translation of the Gratheon cycle he can possibly find. Yeah. So, and this is where, so my bad, this is where. Yes, this is where the attack happens. Runs into Lanfear. She says, be with me. I love you. She's got the crazy X energy, like bad. Oh yeah, you're right. You are totally. And she right. even says, "I'll forsake the dark one. I'll leave the dark one. Just you and me, baby. Let's." You do and this. I could defeat the dark one, and then we could yeah. rule reality. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, he Rand also says, does have. No. Yeah. Um, I like he what also has he just said. This where it starts turning with... into a hair into a harem uh, anime. I like that. <laughs> yes. That is that is worth mentioning. Because sure. this is where uh, he actually steals away some time with Elaine before she goes back to Tarvalon with uh, Nynaeve. Yes. Um, and so they get some time together. He's also got Landfear chomping at his heels. He's already been with Min, sort of, but he doesn't really know that. Like, he's he has weird feelings for Min that he can't. I can relax and be myself around her. She's a exactly. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't really admit any of the feelings that he has for her. But like at the same time, you, the reader, if you well, don't pick up on it at that point where she's like wrapped around him at the end of book two, uh, and then she's like hanging on his every word in book three and he really likes her there and all of that, then you're blind. We get to see Berlaine piss herself. Yeah. Remember too that this is the book in which Egwene gives Elaine <laughs> to Rand. Yes. Where they have the conversation, and Egwene's like, "He's like my brother," and Elaine's like, "Good, because I want to get up on that dragon." You know what I'm saying? Is this the one where they walk in like to have the conversation yeah. with uh-huh. Rand, and they and it's they, literally like, they yeah. they use airweaves against him, and then they think they're all badass, and then he does the same thing, and they're both like, uh, like for what a second, hell, absolutely bro? terrified. Yeah. yeah. Like, huh, I can do it too, bitches. <laughs> and Egwene's no, and just so, like, look, we're not meant for each other. Rand's like, thank God you fucking said it. And she's like... <laughs> well, and I love... You weren't supposed Egwene's to do reaction. that. Exactly. Because yeah. she's like, I'm going to let you down really gently. And he's like, oh, thank God. I was also going to need to let you down gently. And she's like, bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not breaking up with me. I'm no, breaking no, 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 up no. with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, And then Elaine picks him up off the floor. Um, like, and they yeah, have boy. all their stolen kisses and whatnot. So uh, like, and she hey. also starts to teach him about ruling. Uh, and he yeah. actually gets some really good lessons for her, especially because yes. here is probably the, the, the Terran High Lords are probably the biggest obstacle that Rand runs into as far as politics. You could argue the Carrion Lords as well uh, later on, but definitely... Um, the the fucking tier and high lords are are a bunch of yeah. bullshit. Well, I still and so love it, she this actually is where... teaches him a lot of how to politic, um, and really smartly. Yeah, because we yes. get some like we get what I think is two of the the most like um one of the most heart wrenching scenes, and also one of the most like kind of badass but also scary scenes because the the Trollocs and Fades after he tells mm-hmm. Lanfear to fuck off, uh, they were sent the, as we learn later by another Forsaken. Because uh, Lamphere is basically like, no, nah, I didn't do it, but peace out. Good luck. Um, <laughs> the, the, Rand comes right? across that fighting through the halls. a handful of them just yeah. to leave. And he's yeah. like, could you not do that to more of them? Yeah. God, I hate but you Rand so is, much. Rand and the company, they're all running around killing Trollocs and Fades. 
and he comes across the body of a girl who is obviously dead. And he's like, well, I've got Kalendor. With Kalendor, I can do anything. And we get this very descriptive yeah. scene of him forcing power into her, trying to will her back to life, and the body's convulsing, flailing, blood is spurting everywhere. It's a yeah. horrible sight. It, it's he's basically and, doing like a master of puppets who, thing. Yeah, who is it that stops him? Is it is it Moraine, Moraine. or something? Like it literally Moraine. screams yeah. at him to stop. Like what you're he's doing like, is an abomination. This is bro, disgusting. Yeah. And then after he gives up, she's like, "There, there's nothing you can do." And I can't remember if it's just before that or after that that eventually Rand is like, "I've had enough." Lifts Kalendor, yeah, and some of the storm of lightning. That. Oh, so it's yeah. just before he lifts Kalendor, and there's a storm of lightning that literally goes through the halls and selectively fries the shit out of every single one of the trades uh, of the trades of the Trollocs and yes. fades. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I love I, the I moment got, we were there with you. Yeah, and I I love the moment where Rand is running through the halls and he is uh being kind of an idiot because he's running around and he's got the the flame heron mark sword. And he's he is doing well with it. I'm not saying yeah, that he's is, not. He's, he's a whirlwind of death. He is a whirlwind of death. And he's do as I said, he at this point, he is not a blade master, like not really, but at the same time, with a power rot sword, uh, the flame in the void and a number of and, and power flowing through him, he's pretty fucking scary. And so he's killing fades, he's killing trollocs, he is doing really, really well. But Don't he even the is defenders of the stone start running from him. Damage. Oh yeah. yeah, no, everybody's scared of him. They see him, Landfear, he kills a bunch of trolls, they're like, thank God, and they see this guy just huffing, puffing, covered in blood, yeah. holding a shining sword and a flaming sword. Some of sword, it's his. Like, and they like, just go... No, 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 he's not okay. carrying the shining sword, and that's the point, is that during this battle is where he meets Lanfear, and she says to him, what are you doing? Not <laughs> only did you leave Kalendor in your room unguarded, but also... What shit you could be doing with Kalendor is so much better. Than right. what he you could be or did doing he go back and get it? it? No, he goes back and gets it. Oh. Um, Because she can't actually really pick it up. Like, she can. I thought she could weird. touch it, but she couldn't use it. Yeah, it gets... It, it, the rules yeah. on Kalendor are still a little wishy-washy yeah, here. It's um, weird. But yeah, so thing. anyway, she has that conversation with him, and this is the point where she like walks off into the distance and she murders like twenty five Trollocs, and Rand's like, "You bitch!" And then he goes back <laughs> up and he grabs Kalendor, comes down, sees the girl get killed, does then the, does the lightning. lightning storm, and then tries to save That's the right. child. The world's That's first, right. first or last, depending on your perspective of time, Tesla coil. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, and so this is where we really get some kind of like just absolutely nuts. Well, this is where uh, a lot of people, after seeing the thing with the girl, like, okay, we knew the dragon was probably going to go crazy from Sidene and even like Moraine and them were kind of like, maybe he's yeah. already lost his shit. A little bit. And no, even and, the reader is like, that, well, maybe Shani he just has went lost ahead his shit. And, and, and put in something into the chat that I think is like hugely important. Lon. Lon oh, yeah. is one of the people in the whole yeah. books who you cannot in almost any situation get to show any emotion, get to show any fear, get to show anything even remotely looking like non-poker face. Yeah. And this is a moment absolutely where, where he yeah. Rand tries to do this to this child. Moraine stops him and she is very kid gloves with him. Because she knows that he might be insane. And she yep. also understands his feelings so much. I can imagine Moraine trying to do this and realizing it was a bad idea many years ago. And so she feels for him. Yeah. I mean, it's and part of what makes it so terrifying. And how she relatable looked, it is. he looks up at Lon, and both of them are scared. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what part part of what makes the scene so impactful is. Oh, absolutely! It's terrifying, but it's one hundred percent relatable because if you were in the same position, you just got this thing that the power that it gives you makes you feel like you can do anything. You're like, yeah, okay, you would try to. If save there that was ever a too. point that I could bring somebody back to life, it'd be holding this thing. So I'm going to try it. Yep. And then, and of course, because you know, part of Rand sees the sees Moraine. Yeah, you see, you know, part of Rand sees Moraine. And then sees Lawn, 
and is like, what have I done? Yeah. And I mean, like, it's also definitely true here that even at this point, this is this is, this is a hell of flashbacks of to lose Theron. This is flashbacks oh, yeah. to the pro oh, yeah. oh, for yeah. sure. Fucking a. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely this is the point where I still think that Rand is is having troubles in terms of all the way from, um, you know, uh, from the camp to here or to the stone. Right. He is dealing with some some sleep deprivation. He's dealing with already thinking he might be crazy. He's dealing with his friends turning against him in his dreams, all of this different stuff. And even when he gets to the Stone of Tear, this is not that long after having taken it. And I definitely still think that he is dealing with that shit. And so when he tries to go ahead and bring this child back to life, he is like gone. Right. And so when he looks up at two of the people that he actually really respects, because holy shit, he is starting to really understand Moraine. And Lon is probably his best friend in the world right now. Yeah, and well, he he's the only one that's not terrified of him. Jesus Christ. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Creator. Save us. Christ. <laughs> Creator Christ. <laughs> but, let's uh, move but on yeah. from the stone. Yeah, so then, then they have the big battle. He decides, okay, I pulled Kalendor. I am the dragon. This proves it. Yep. I, it's proof. Now... I got to go get the people of the dragon yep. and Ruark. I believe it's Ruark who says, um, yeah, that's us. Everybody's yeah. like, what? Well, they, they revealed yeah. that at the end of uh, the dragon reborn. They yep. did. Yeah. Uh, so now it's so... like, cause like we get the point where Moraine is sitting there and Rand's not moving, doing anything. Perrin's not moving, doing anything. Matt is trying everything he can to get the fuck out of here, but always gets drawn <laughs> yeah. back in. He's like, this is some bullshit. Every and time I think I'm out, they pull me think, right back in. I think the attack is part of what finally gets Rand and company to, to move. To Correct. Move, yeah. Yes. Um, and so that's whenever Rand is like, basically we get Rand, Matt, Egwene, Moraine, and the IL, definitely including a, a certain maiden of the spear who is doing everything she can not to go back to the IL waste. To yep. go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, because this is all, this is instigated by the battle, but also by the wise ones. Yeah. Because actually, there aren't any wise ones, or sorry, I shouldn't necessarily say that. We don't have any named wise ones make a big appearance or anything in the in the stone. I'm not right. saying that they couldn't be there, but they're not they're, they're really not there for us. They're not talked about. Yeah. For the reader. Yeah. Uh, but they get. Uh, they contact Moraine and tell her that she needs to come to Ruidian. They contact Egwene and tell her that she needs to come to uh, the, the Isle Waste. To, to they them. tell Avienda yeah. that she needs to come be a wise one and therefore go to Ruidian. And uh, I don't, they don't they contact also... Rand directly, but I think they tell Moraine. Well, they talk to Ruark as well. Rand needs yeah, yeah, yeah. to go to. They Ruidian talk to everybody. Well. They yeah. go to everybody. They talk to. They talk. But to they Ruark. don't talk to Rand directly. Yeah, no. The wise ones don't talk to Rand. But the wise they ones talk also, through other people. The funny part about this is the wise ones. They've tried several times already to talk to Avienda. Yeah, correct. This time they and tell Moraine, "Hey, <laughs> that uh, that full girl Avienda." They give her an insult to call her that even makes Avienda blush. Oh yeah, and is like tell her that she must come too. Yeah, and I do love how Moraine is like, uh, "You got to come too," and Avienda is like, "Damn it!" Do you know someone <laughs> named uh, uh, a Miss, a Mize, uh, something, something like that? Well, she said this, and Avienda is like, you, oh, I'll, "I'll go to Ruark." I know I said I wouldn't. One, that I was, I was going to go off to this other place, but no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. One of the one of the other things that I feel like is important to mention here. This is the last time the Emmons Field Five are all together. Correct. Up until the last battle. Correct. When they leave the Stone of Tear, Rand goes here, Matt goes there, Perrin goes way the fuck over there. Well, Matt Elena goes Nynaeve with Rand go for this. Up. He does. He goes or, with or Rand that's for right. this. That's right. That's and right. And so does Egwene. And so the three of them are actually together Wait, for a does, little while. Does Perrin but... set, set off back for Amon's Field at this point? Yes. 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 He hears about trouble in the two rivers, and he well, heads back. and he we and know Pio. about trouble in the two rivers. Oh, that's right, because Avienda, Avienda was like, "I'll go with him." 
to do yeah. the thing because there's going to be a yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, no. Bitch. And they're like, eh, you're adorable. Uh, but yeah, we know that because because who said that he was going to meet Rand on Almuth Plain or else he was going to go to Emmons Field? Pot yeah, on add on fame. That's and right. so given that it takes Rand so long to get to Almuth Plain because he fucks up the portal stone, <laughs> uh, Pot on Fame has already left Almuth Plain. And yeah. he has gone to the two rivers. And that's when Rand kind of sends Perrin to the two rivers. And like, again, it's really more of Rand just tells him about this and says, hey, can you go take care of this? And Perrin goes, yeah, are you fucking kidding me? I'm definitely going to go to the two rivers. Yeah. Um, but it, it, and so it's, it's not like Rand actually commands him to do it, but it's definitely Rand and him have a conversation and he goes, yeah, two rivers, I need to go. Cause you yep. can't. And Rand is pretty much like, you know, I want to go. Yes, but I'm but kind of a big deal things. now, so I have to go do this thing. <laughs> so so cool. let's fast. Uh, let's so fast forward a little where, bit. This uh, is where Rand actually successfully uses the yeah. portal stones. He actually That's gets right. people to Ruidian, uh like really well this mm-hmm. time. It, yeah. uh, so and surprises where, the wise ones. They're like, we didn't expect right? you for like another two or three weeks. Yeah, yep, at exactly. minimum. Uh, and so this is where we have the the scene where Rand and Matt both end up going to Ruidian, uh, even though Matt's not supposed to go, uh, or not supposed to. I'm putting that in quotes. Um, by tradition, he's not. By supposed tradition, to go. he's not supposed to go. Then again, Avienda, by tradition, Moraine's and Moraine has already gone. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Moraine gets sent first, then Avienda goes next, and she outpaces Moraine and gets there first anyway. Um, and then Rand and Matt. Oh no, no, no. Sorry. I was about to say no, Matt Rand and Matt go first Sorry. because yeah. Rand and Matt go first. Because I'll be into them. Both of them out. get outpaced. And Matt's like, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I just saw a naked woman running in the <laughs> desert. And Rand's like, it's <laughs> just the heat, man. Yep. And I believe it's actually Moraine and Avienda that they both see. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're not I, sure. Because like they're or like either way. they're far enough away that I can't really tell. Uh but anyway, so they both far get enough to... where I can't tell who it is, but I can tell it's a naked woman. So, <laughs> one other thing is is one of the reasons why Rand made this decision is because he went through the twisted door to Rangreal in tear. Yes, that is mm-hmm. correct. So that, that is, is actually, actually a, a an important piece. distinction to make because it yes. the three of them matters. Did. All yes, three of them the three being Moraine Rand. 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 Because Rand's like, I, I, Rand is like, I need to go there. Moraine says, I need to go there. Well, and, and Matt's just along for the ride. Because whenever he gets there and he decides, hey, look, another fucking doorway, I'm going to go give those motherfuckers a piece of my mind. <laughs> yes. Um, well, Matt also <laughs> says, like, I do need to go there. Because he also, we don't see Moraine or Rand actually go through it. We see them come out. Yeah. Because yeah. we watch Matt do it. And he also gets some answers that are like, you need to go to Ridian. And he's like, where what Screw i don't even know you. what that is yeah. like fucking what and then so he goes with with rand they both go and that's when matt does all of his stuff we've already talked about that because yep. we've already yep. talked about matt um and rand goes through the crystal columns which we've also actually which talked about pretty discussed. thoroughly yep yeah um and but so we will skip get there. over that a little bit there's this bubble of evil that happens in ruidian he learns about himself he gets the tattoos or his history i should say yeah uh he gets the tattoos and there's one on each arm he comes out of ruidian uh and goes back to the wise ones who are waiting Ooh, for them and this is where exactly yeah not initially he comes out and while they are in ruidian yeah there's another bubble of evil yeah that's what i said hold on Hold on. I might be remembering things in the wrong order. Okay, I am. Because it's after all that he chases somebody back into... He chases, yeah, he chases Asmodian. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was thinking that, that happened that, after that, he that, came that, out. That's at the end of this book. Yeah. yeah. So he first goes back to the Wise Ones. And again, one of the greatest things, he absolutely comes back to them on the dawn yeah. of the second day and so he is he who comes with the dawn because he shows up at sunrise back to the camp from rudy and wearing the two dragon tattoos yes, uh, yes so, Marshana, we said that Rand was told that he needed to go to ruidy on when he went through the redstone doorway in tier yes basically now again then, we don't see what they exactly say but i uh, yeah but yeah I, I like that up until this point, Rand is just kind of flying by the seat of his pants. Oh, we like, might be wrong about that. He oh. got lucky as hell. 
with and we can't really say why we were wrong without sorry josh i I don't mean to keep interrupting you no you're good you're good we can't really say why he was actually we shouldn't even be saying he was told because that would be a spoiler beyond the scope of what we're talking about because we don't know what he well and that and that's that's actually the point that i was kind of getting to is that rand is at this point in time it's still sheep herder hay in his hair never seen nothing but the backside of a hill in the two rivers farm boy ran why does he go i can't remember why he goes then no but okay so more shoddy does give a good point this is a little past the spoiler warning so if you don't want to be spoiled please understand that we we do actually kind of have to deal with this because this happens at this point even though we don't hear about what happens until later because he tells us or that the books tell us what his questions were in the red door tear on Griot. but we don't actually hear what they say to him and so right. his three questions are how to remove the dark one's taint how to win the last battle and how to kill the dark one but it doesn't say anything about what the answers to those right. three questions are we never I think, I th- if i remember correctly he never reveals what he was told but at the end of this he does go ahead and say i think he um, goes because of the people of the dragon because he suppo- the people of the dragon are supposed to follow him. He has some interaction to do with that's, the IL. I yes, think yes. that's what gets him to go into yes. the waste. Yes. And then once and he's so there, the wise again, ones say that you need to go into Ruinion. Well, and says, it's, it's Moraine who has been contacted by the wise ones who say you need to come see us. It's Ruark that says you actually kind of need to go to the waste. There's a lot of influence that he has. But again, as you said, he's... um he is definitely sitting there not really moving and not really doing anything. And so he gets the, he gets those things that he needs to do. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it later. It's the kick in the pants of going through the red door tear on Griel and the battle that actually gets him to move. He, it's not anybody sort of telling him. Yeah. That he needs to go to the waste specifically. Cause he's been told that like 12 times. He, he decides to go. The reason he just, the why of why he goes to the waste is because he learns that, you know, because they're all like, well, who are the people of the dragon? Oh, <laughs> that's weird. And then Ruark goes, we are, we're the people of the dragon. And if you're the Kara Karn, and he goes, of course I'm the dragon reborn. They go, ha ha ha, yeah. no. That's if you're the is. Kara Karn, you need to come to Ruidion and correct it. Yes. So it's a combination so goes, of their understandings of what they're told from the IL yes. and the prophecies of the dragon that Rand and company are like, or whoever he's talking to, are like, yes, right. it's supposed to be the same figure. So if I am that, I need to go there in the prop. Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And, I like, and what, I like what more Shadi said in the live together. chat. Because uh, more yeah. Shadi puts it in a, in a good a good point. It may not be what Rand thinks or says, but the, the need is still there. If he is the Dragonborn, if he is the Karkarn, he is going to need a loyal army that is yes. going to be with him yes. out of pure loyalty, not out of being forced. Exactly. Yes, so, and so if yeah. he can prove himself to be the Karakarn, basically he trusts Ruark and the other clan chiefs that are there in the stone that the Aiel will be that army or that right. they would be if he could prove himself to be uh, the Karakarn. And so yeah. he goes to the Waste to prove that he is... Yes. Uh, the Kar Karn and to gain said army. Yes. And that's, and that's the, and that's the thing is it, where I was going with the whole, you know, he's just a farm boy. He's just a simple kid flying by the seat of his pants. But so far his sort of Taviran armor has set things in motion for him that he's been able to grasp a hold of to propel the story along, which yep. has been, really really great for him and worked out really really well in this case he's he's trying to prove himself to the Aiel so that he can bring the Aiel with him to unite everything because of one of the answers he got in the door which was you have to unite the east and the north must be as one the west and the south must be as one and then the two must be as one everybody gotta come to come together Right so, now. Slight spoilers on, on that for those of you that are Yeah, that was, I mean, soft listening. spoilers. But 
but this you'll, is you'll find it out. Is. But I mean, it, it all it does is help explain why something happens now. He, um, he even says eventually, as he comes into you know, as he's gathering the clans together, he says, "We're gonna get all the clans. I'm gonna be Kara Karn, and then we're gonna go in to the three or you know, into the wetlands, and we're gonna conquer, and we're gonna bring everybody together." And then once I unify everybody, we're gonna go to Shail Ghoul and destroy some shit. And so that's kind of his thought process at the moment. Daniel, you and dropped yes. out of Discord as well. I, I did. Yeah, you did. You dirty did. dirty boy. Your your internet decided, you know what, you need to be quiet for a second, even <laughs> though you okay. were already Daniel, very quiet. Daniel's done. Yeah. Daniel's done. Uh, but yeah, so we are actually going to speed through the rest of this book pretty quickly because we were going to get to three or we were hoping to get to three and we were barely even going to get through two, which is fine. But somebody has a heart out in 13 minutes. Uh, <laughs> but I, we do definitely, well, I mean, we didn't want to go that much past That's true. Uh, 13 minutes anyway. But anyway, uh, so Rand comes back from Ruidian. He kind of proves to the people who are there that he is the Karakarn. The wise ones say we can get all the clan chiefs together to help prove it at this particular meeting place for the Aiel, but we need to travel there uh, and we need to do it sort of by foot because we can't really do it any other way. Um, and we've got a lot to do by the time that we get there anyway. So let's just go. So they head there. A bunch of stuff happens on the way there, including a, a Dark Hounds attack uh, that almost kills Matt, that Rand Bale fires them uh, to uh, save Matt's life. Well, that's what that happens in Cold Rocks, doesn't it? No. That happens on the way to Cold Rocks. Uh, they were, no, because they were inside, because the way they remember it happens is they can see the footprints and the stones outside Matt's door. Correct. As they arrive there ahead of the other clans, and they're in Cold Rocks for a while, awaiting the other clans to arrive. Okay, you're no, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, so sorry. On the way there, there is a Trollic attack. They meet some merchants, um, and this yeah. is very questionable. Shady as fuck. Shady as fuck. They're also being tr uh, paralleled by uh, the Shido Aiel, who are really mad at him for so many reasons. Um, and they have Kooladin with them, who also, uh, we find out later, went to Ruidian without the approval of the Wise Ones. Which they actually is told him no. They went Yeah, they told him no. What they yeah. said. <laughs> Uh, but he is mad because his brother Muradin did not come back, and he thinks that Rand killed him. Um, yeah. this is, so they they meet for the first time. Rand meets Kuladin the first time at Al Kardal, which it translates Correct. into yes. the Golden Bowl, which is um, has executed its near Ru Ruidion and Cold Rock's Hole. So it's kind of like in the middle, but it's a meeting place just for the clan chiefs. No, no, he's there when they are on the pe the, the the slopes of uh, yeah cool yeah. cool is Rudy. there Cold yeah i thought yeah he, and he meets rant oh yeah oh yeah you're right. Yeah. You're, right. Rand. Yeah, yeah. you're right you're right he Sorry. does because he's like this is not tradition you're full of shit and then you're you know, right the, they the, end the up golden, saying fuck you the golden <laughs> bowl or al cardal is where the contradictory declarations happen yes correct and that's that where correct. and that's where rand breaks the idea blows everybody's by minds. telling them the truth of it and then of course cool it right proves before himself. or sorry no right after sorry yeah and then so i was gonna Kool say cool it yeah. improves himself a fraud by saying my people were warriors all the way back to the age of legends and, and every that's when, like, chief of wise one is like uh, all the clan yeah. chiefs and all the wise ones are like Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep and then uh of course they're they're dealing with this and then and Rand brings the rain literally yeah he brings the rain to go ahead and stop the fulfilling fighting that's another happening another prophecy but instead of, of actually following through with his stupid rain clouds he ends up chasing asmodian back to ruidian uh and that's the where he are fighting now yeah yep. Uh, and so he then gets, he skims to Ruidian, following Asmodian. They mm -hmm. get into a fight. Lanfear shows up and basically shields oh, yeah. Asmodian down to a really low level. Puts so training wheels on his ass. not a threat to Rand, yeah, she does. but so that he can still teach Rand, says, oh, just a reminder, uh, I'm doing this for you. You and I need to kill the Dark One together because fuck that guy. Uh, and then uh, 
Rand finds one of or both of the keys to you the find them because you find out Asmodean wasn't actually really there to fight Rand. That's right. Yeah, he was there to go after. He was there to the get the Shonen keys. call keys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so Rand picks them up, gets his new, uh, you know, teacher. Uh, fear is like, I'll come for mine whenever it's the time. Land fear. Yeah. She's like, hold um, on to mine then, for now. It'll be a wedding present. Yep. Fucking and then psycho. goes back to the bowl. Yeah. Uh, as things are winding down, and a lot of the Aiel have left. Because right. they cannot deal with this. Right. But all of the clan chiefs are still there. All of the wise ones are still there. Except for the Shido Aiel who are like, fuck you. We're taking our clan, well, our non-clan chief and all of our wise ones and piecing the fuck out. I mean, because that's where you discover you have the, they start referring to a, a vast multitude of the Aiel as the lost. Because they yes. can't cope. They, they don't believe Kuladin, but they also can't believe what Rand said. <laughs> <laughs> so they just fuck off into the desert. Screw you. Take my spear and take my home. spear and go ahead. They're like, this is a good option as any because if either one of them is right, we're supposed to die anyway. So fuck it, off into the desert. Yep. Like mass depression. Uh, the Shido yep. uh, stay largely loyalty loyal to Kuladin uh, because they're well, and they start getting a bunch of teams. other people who are right. uh, start to be yeah. loyal to. The I mean, they start recruiting well. from from the quitters anyway. So that's true. Well, they don't even need to recruit. That's the that's the scariest part is oh, that yeah. they talk about this is into the next book, which I will touch on for just a moment before we say goodbye. Uh, but most of the lost either throw down their spears and go go be try to be guy Shane. Um, or you know, even though they should not be guy shamed by the the rules of of Aiel, you know, Gito, uh, they just go off into the who knows. Yeah, Wait, they they're, they're in Ruidian. Yeah, that's at the right. End of the book. They're sitting. That's in, right. Because Rand wants to I wait for the additional I, clans. I'm, I'm to going join to interrupt only because I have to. Uh, my internet freaked out, so I don't know if I actually recorded any of the last like minute and a half. That'll oh, be fun. No. It'll be awesome. We'll figure it out. That'll be another benefit for our patrons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I did or not because everything froze. So indeed. So this has been our our look at Rand. Everything's yep. happy so far. Rand hasn't known. He's known one major defeat, and you know he's got a he's taken a couple wounds, but so far our boy's doing good. <laughs> yeah, we're, and we're trying. We're he's not trying one to. That will never heal. We're not trying to do only two books of on rand every episode we we'll want to there. do more but because so There's much of so rand much. is ingrained in everything that happens in the story a lot to unpack it might be that way so don't be surprised there's gonna be times like this one where there's only a week break from rand there might be ones where there's a two-week break um we will not overload you with rand but it's gonna take some time <laughs> Yeah, there's also, uh, as you've seen, the part one of the first video inclusive YouTuber panel has been posted on YouTube. Um, Absolutely. That's already gotten like 100 views, which what, astounds what? me, blows my mind. Um, so there's there's that kind of stuff that's out and coming out too. Patreons, if you haven't already seen it, uh, go check our Patreon. There's a link for you there for a video that nobody else should be able to get to don't share out the link uh because there are certain ways we have to make these videos available that patreon doesn't support right. entirely so uh only patrons have access to it unless you put the link out there and if you do then that tells us that we can't just do it the way we're trying to do it now and we have to figure out something else because patreon can only handle up to like 512 megabytes of a video, which the next ones might actually be short uh, or file size is small <laughs> enough for that. So it may work Maybe. out. But Maybe. Uh, for that one, yes, we'll um, it, it is out there. It is. Um, yeah, yep. that's all I want to say right there because there might be ways for people to find it. Go follow but us indeed. on Twitter at Tower Podcast. If you're on Facebook, we've got a Facebook page at Tower Podcast. How crazy is that? It's I know, almost like we planned that. I know, especially Weird. right now with all the the Facebook side uh, controversy about the casting. Uh, I, I said this on Twitter earlier today, and I I'm not going to pat myself on the back too much, but I'm really proud of the saying. Facebook is the Thakandor River of our time. 
Uh, Hakandar, <laughs> Hakandar, 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 Hakandar. Um, if you don't know what that is, then just keep reading and you'll you'll figure it out and you'll understand. <laughs> Rafa would get there, but uh, it yeah, seems uh, it seems to be based off of how the Wheel of Time fandom is in mass acting on Facebook. Not everybody, yeah. yes. uh, by all means, not everyone. Which is why we're happy to have the Twitter of Time community that we call home. Yes, and also the Discord community of the Black Tower Podcast, That's which right. seems to be the most best uh, i yeah. said it the most best uh, but yeah speaking of if you are not part of our uh discord community definitely come join us uh there are definitely invites on our Podbean. um you can also just ask for one on twitter or anything like that and we would be happy to go ahead and send you one because we have a lot of fun including these that some people are hearing right now that are our Patreons That's that right. are hearing fantastic live content on our di- or through our discord. Indeed. Thank you guys but, so much for listening. You guys are awesome. We absolutely. appreciate you more and more every day. True. What he said. <laughs> absolutely. Cause I, so, I mean, I can't say it better. So just to right. show it up, you know what, from all of us, the black tower, I, have been josh and i have been andrew and i have been daniel and we hope that all of you are having an amazing morning that everything is going your way that nothing bad happens uh and that every wish that you have comes true and in case we don't see you again good afternoon good evening and good night